Welcome back to the channel. I had to move my hands straight off the bat because I've been told I hold the mic with two hands and look real suspect. So we're not going to start that way. What we are going to start doing, though, is talking about rookies. I didn't talk about them up until this point for two reasons. One, I decided to start off with what I know, getting back into the swing of things, because I haven't really dove. Yeah, dove is the correct word. I didn't dive into the rookie class all too deep up until this point. And number two, the reason why I didn't dive that deep is because nothing really happened. And I hate, absolutely hate Dynasty Twitter because a guy like George Pickens will be somebody's wide receiver one for three straight seasons. And then all of a sudden, he tears his ACL. He looks good when he comes back. And they're like, eh, eh. I'm going to put Jamison Williams over him, who also tore his ACL. There's just too much going on. People talk too much. People overthink things. It's the reason why people were moving Jerry Judy all over the place. Listen, maybe they should have because the guy fucking stinks. But it causes a lot of angst and it causes a lot of... I got to move these hands. It causes a lot of infighting with yourself being like, damn, is Justin Jefferson actually good? Or are those 1,800 yards and 21 touchdowns in college a fluke? He's really good. Same with Jamar Chase. Same with all this stuff. So I didn't want to jump too deep until something concrete actually came to fruition which is now the nfl combine this is coming out thursday the combine i believe starts today for quarterbacks tight ends receivers tomorrow running backs are testing either way i'm going to talk about players that i'm excited for and what i'm looking for at the combine not everything matters at the combine dk metcalf's three cone drill didn't matter a lot of quarterback hand measurements probably don't matter a lot of things don't matter and a lot of the things i say today probably will not matter but it's what I'm looking for. It's things that you guys could look for. There's a few guys who are like under the radar types. If you're watching this show in the middle, or I guess the beginning of March, you probably know all these names, maybe even a little bit better than I do. But if not, there could be some guys on this list or in this video that jump out to you or could kind of pique your interest and give you a reason to watch however many hours of coverage the NFL Combine brings about every year. So without further ado, let's hit the intro. Okay, so it's no secret that this year the quarterback class is absolutely not terrible, mediocre. There's no top end talent like Joe Burrow, or people aren't tanking for Tua, and Justin Herbert certainly isn't here. Shout out to God. In last year's class, there were five guys at the top that everybody wanted, no burger and fries, and they all kind of stunk as rookies. But what we did see is a little bit of fantasy relevance out of guys named Trey Lance and Justin Fields. Mac Jones was eh as a rookie. Zach Wilson mostly stunk. Trevor Lawrence mostly stunk. But we've seen other guys like Jalen Hurts, like, I guess, Justin Herbert a little bit because of it. And other mobile quarterbacks be fantasy relevant, even if in their rookie years, and for Jalen Hurts' case, beyond that, their arm talent, their accuracy, their overall prowess as a real quarterback, as a throwing quarterback, isn't there. So though people want to knock this quarterback class based on their lack of ability to throw the ball or the fact that they're not top-end talents, which also is kind of suspect because nobody can scout quarterbacks. Brett Coleman, who's very good at scouting, missed on Herbert. He missed on a few of other, a few other guys, which I believe he's putting a video out or already has on. Nobody is good at scouting quarterbacks. Nobody really knows if a quarterback's throws are going to translate to the next level. Everybody thought Patrick Mahomes was a wild gunslinger who couldn't do anything in the NFL. Man's an MVP deep and still looking for more. So I'm going to be touching on the fact that I am very interested in seeing the 40 times for these college quarterbacks because although not all of them seem overly mobile, <clears throat> they're, they're white, can't really run all too well. They did pick up a lot of rushing yards in college, whether it's Kenny Pickett or Matt Corral or Sam Howell. These guys actually ran a ton in college. And they're very, very productive in that area of the field. Now, a lot of people may not know this. I'm sure if you're watching this, you might know this. But I saw an exchange on Twitter where somebody who I know wasn't aware that in college football, if you get sacked, it's negative rushing yards. So if you look at a guy's stat line and he had like 15 rushes in the game with two touchdowns, but 27 yards, 
I'm like, damn, how the fuck was this guy moving? It's because he probably got sacked four times for 10, 15 yard losses, and that gets negated from his total. So when we're actually looking at quarterbacks rushing totals in college, you have to take that into account, and it's very, very hard to take that into account without having some premium services that tell you how many designed and scramble rushing yards the quarterbacks had, taking away those lost yards on sacks. But here at BDGE, we subscribe to Pro Football Focus, and I have those numbers. Now, I don't know the legalities behind me telling you how many rushing yards these guys actually had, but I'll give you, I'll give you a little bit of a range and put it into your mind how good this class is putting the ball on the ground. Not fumbling, rushing. Ike, you're going to have to cut this because i got to read this shit crazy. Or you know what? I don't really care. I'm going to read it right off my phone because nobody expects me to remember 20 different numbers. Kenny Pickett, big dude, big arm. Might not think he can run all that well because his rushing total from college didn't look great. But the guy had over 400 scramble yards in college. So if a play breaks down, not afraid to run the ball. Kind of like Justin Herbert type. He's not going to have many design runs. But... If something shitty happens in that backfield, if he goes to the Steelers and they can't block for anything, he can pick up yards on the ground. That's good for you in fantasy. Matt Corral had over 700 rushing yards this past year. In my comp for him, I guess you could buy the draft guide and read it up, but I have a Tyler Huntley, Taylor Heineke, a lot of T names, but something like that. THs, a little th, th. He can't throw, but he can run the fucking shit. He's a very good runner of the ball. He had a lot of design runs as well as scrambled runs or scramble yards. Malik Willis, highly regarded as the best runner in this class, over 1,100 rushing yards on the season. Guys, absolutely ridiculous. About an even amount between rushing yards that were designed and rushing yards that came off of scrambling. Then we have Samuel Howell. He had over 1,100 rushing yards. Again, an equal split between designed runs, scramble runs. And then Desmond Ritter had over 500 rushing yards, a little more designed than scramble. I say all this to say... It may not translate to the NFL, and the reason for that, I'm not sure if correlation implies causation here, but 40 time is going to be important because a lot of guys that can run in college do so because not all defensive linemen in college football can run a 4-8 to a 5-0, which almost everyone in the NFL can if you're pretty good. So they are able to escape from that pocket, make moves beyond the line of scrimmage, and pick up those yards. I looked up a one guy, I guess one case of it happening. James Winston, uh, I believe his last two years or maybe his second to last year in college, he had over 400 rushing yards. The guy ran a 497. He can't run for shit in the NFL. I'm sure there's other cases of that. So I decided to look a little in depth. And this past year, when it comes to fantasy quarterbacks, this past year, the year of our Lord 2021, is that what they say? Of the top 10 rushing quarterbacks in the NFL, so total rushing yards, of those 10, only two ran slower than a 4.7 40-yard dash in the combine. One being Josh Allen, who is a physical freak and probably one of the better runners of the football in the NFL. And two, Daniel Jones. That dude's a fucking lunatic, and he'll run from any situation. So he ran a 4.81, and I believe Josh Allen ran a 4.75. Regardless, all of the guys who topped the league in rushing yards were running four fives four sixes high four sixes low four fives high four fives all that shit so if we want to see a guy like matt corral or sam howell or kenny pickett or guys who you may not think are all too athletic or going to translate their rushing game to the nfl if they do run somewhere in that four five to four six a sub four seven i do think that they have potential to listen if they're not going to be able to throw the ball well at least if they're put in a situation like Jalen Hurts was where he didn't have all too many weapons as a rookie or even in his second year when he did have more weapons, be able to produce as a very fantasy viable quarterback because they can get it done with their legs. I looked at these numbers beyond 2021 also. The year prior, I think it was 7 out of 10 quarterbacks. Yeah, the year prior was 7 out of 10 quarterbacks. It was still Daniel Jones. It was still Josh Allen. And then Carson Wentz uh, came into the fold the year prior and then of the top eight quarterbacks when it came to rushing yards this year only josh allen ran a sub four seven and then this year of the top eight quarterbacks and rushing yards only two didn't run a sub four six that was tyler huntley and josh allen the year prior only one didn't and that was daniel jones 
so I say all this to say I'm looking forward to seeing the 40 yard dashes at the combine. There really isn't too much else you can look for in quarterbacks at the combine. Like they're going to throw the ball. They're going to miss throws. These guys that they're throwing to most of the time, they've never thrown to them before. So there's no chemistry. I don't really look for that. I guess hand size, but these guys aren't hand models. And as long as it's not sub eight inches and looks like uncle Jack from it's always sunny, then I think they should be okay. Moving on to running backs. Again, I'm going to be talking about the 40-yard dash because that's all I really care about. I know verticals and explosiveness matters, but you can't really project to that. I guess on tape you can say this guy has burst, but you don't know how high he jumps because how often is a running back going over the top like LT in college? Never because nobody's going to be like LT, the real LT. Shout out snacks. A few guys that I'm looking for. One, Kenneth Walker. Not only his 40 time, but his weight. He's apparently 210. I believe Noah dropped a video last week saying that he's probably going to be lighter. And if this guy cannot run four fours, I'm probably all out on him. Because we look at fantasy running backs this past year in particular, they either had very good speed scores or they could catch passes. This guy can't catch, or at least he hasn't shown he can catch in college. And if he doesn't have that speed score, I'm kind of worried. And just touching on the guys this past year that finished as RB1s, every single running back had at least a 60th percentile speed score, which is like weight adjusted. So if you run a 4.5, but you're 240 like Derrick Henry, that's really good. And that's probably better than if you ran a 4.3 at 195 pounds. So it takes into account how heavy a guy is and how fast that they ran. And if we look at the top 12 again, all but six, so half of the top 12 had 90th plus percentile speed scores. The only ones who didn't top that mark all all catch passes actually scratch that not all of them two of them didn't but i'll explain it number one christian mccaffrey catches a shit ton of passes eckler catches passes alvin Kamara catches passes deandre swift catches passes the two who aren't like elite pass catchers dalvin cook probably a top three pure rusher in the nfl so i don't think kenneth walker is going to come in and be a top three pure rusher so it's gonna be hard for him to finish that high and James Conner, who just scored an egregious amount of touchdowns this year, also catches a decent amount of touch, a decent amount of reception. So, not to say I don't think Kenneth Walker could ever reach those heights, but it's going to be really hard for him to be a top 12 running back. And that's also not to say to not draft the guy if he doesn't run a 4-4 because he can't catch passes as well, because there's decent finishes outside the top 12. But even beyond the top 12, these guys are still athletic freaks in the RB2 range. And for me, I'm not trying to draft an RB3 in fantasy when he's going to have a first-round rookie price tag. And yeah, just touching on that, there were only three running backs in the top 24 this year with below 50th percentile speed scores. It was Josh Jacobs, who caught a lot of passes this year, scored touchdowns. Aaron Jones, same thing, catches passes, scores touchdowns. And Kareem Hunt, who can also catch passes and also scores touchdowns. And in the games that he played on a point-per-game basis... Kareem Hunt was really freaking good, and he didn't play the full year, but he was really good when he played. So I don't see Kenneth Walker having the talent level of these guys when it comes to an all-around skill set, so I'm going to be a little worried if he doesn't go out there and burn. I also forgot Jay Rob on that list, but again, the guy missed part of the season. He catches passes, and he scores touchdowns, so whatever. And then we're going to talk about two more guys I'm interested in looking at. One is Kyron Williams of Notre Dame. In Noah's video, he had him listed at 199. He said if he weighs in at 199, he's probably 199 because most coaches and most, most college programs would run up to 200. I want to see what he weighs in at. We've seen guys in the past bulk up, like Jalen Rager infamously bulked up. And he ran a little bit slower because of it. If Kyron Williams comes in at like 205 or 210 and still runs a 4-4 somehow, that'd be awesome. If not, if he runs as expected and he weighs in as expected, it kind of hampers his upside because he's a little bit of a smaller guy. And that's also the same with James Cook. I'm really interested in James Cook. He's not as good as his brother, but he catches passes really damn well. He's real fluid. He's apparently 190 or 195 pounds, so that's going to be tough if he is that weight. But again, same with Kyron Williams. We're going to look for his weight and we're going to look for his 40 time to see if he's going to be anything more than a Chris Thompson or a James White or a Tariq Cohen type, which would kind of be sad and move him out of probably the first two rounds of rookie drafts, although it is kind of a shallow class. And last up, I'm going to talk about receivers. These are guys that I'm just interested in. Genuinely, I find the most interest in the wide receiver position. And there isn't much to say in terms of athletic testing or what they're going to do at the combine because we know 40 time doesn't necessarily matter for any of these guys. Like Cooper Cup was the wide receiver one, isn't that fast. Devontae Adams, 
uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Keenan Allen, you name it. It doesn't really matter how fast they are, but it is interesting to see, and it may rule out a few guys, a few of these smaller guys like Wandale Robinson or Wandale or Wandale. I listen, apologies. I don't watch fucking Kentucky football or Louisville football or wherever he played. He's a smaller dude, about five ten, a buck eighty five. If he doesn't run four fours, I'm gonna be nervous. Same with Chris Olave. Listen, the guy can be as polished as he would like, and we had the same concerns last year with Devonta Smith. Like the guy's super skinny, and he's not that built. He's not built like an NFL player, but he runs well and he creates separation despite that. So I wasn't too worried. Olave definitely creates separation in college, despite his size. But if he goes out there and runs a four five. Listen, NFL cornerbacks who also run four fours and four fives and some four threes aren't going to be afraid to put their hands on him and be like, listen, if he beats me at the line, he's not going to burn me because he doesn't have that speed. So I might as well get up in his face and push this skinny motherfucker to the ground. So that's going to be two guys I look for. In the same vein, another small guy, an interesting one is Calvin Austin out of Memphis. He's a track star. Do that music or, like TikTok or something. That was so lame. He's similar to Anthony Schwartz in the fact that he's probably not the best football player and probably not going to be a good football player in the NFL, but he might run a 4-2, and I think that shit's just fun to watch. So this is one of the guys that I mentioned before you might not have heard of. Then again, he might not have a fantasy impact. Then again, it's kind of fun to watch these guys run because John Ross ran a 4-2 at one point, was I think the eighth overall pick, almost got himself an island, but he didn't want to switch to Adidas. Now he doesn't wear any sort of cleats, so that didn't matter for him at all. And there's definitely a ton more receivers that I'm looking to as well. Like Sky Moore out of Western Michigan. Hopefully he does better than former Western Michigan player alum Corey Davis. He's somebody who I really, really like, and I wouldn't be surprised if he runs in the four threes. This guy has speed to burn, but also his athleticism or his acceleration is incredible. If you watch this guy play his double moves, he gets up to full speed real quick. And the 40 yard dash is more so about acceleration than top speed. It's how fast you can get to that top speed. And I think he could challenge four threes and get himself maybe day one capital, but most likely day two. If he runs that fast, he has a very, very nice skill set. Although he does play in the Mac, I believe. So it's tough to tell if it's going to translate, but if that speed looks as good at the combat as it does on film, he could be extremely, extremely interesting. Same with Jahan Dotson out of Penn State, State Penn. Again, another guy who can run in the four threes. He might fill the role of what teams wanted in Jameson Williams. Listen, Jameson Williams, I hope he gets back healthy, but it's a very similar skill set. Jameson Williams, probably the better overall player. But if this guy goes out and runs a four three and we know that he's healthy and teams know that he's healthy, he might find himself in day one capital range just because he's the fast dude who's productive in college at a big program and teams want that to be able to diversify the skill sets on their roster and want that burner to open up the field he's another guy i'm interested in a few other guys who aren't probably gonna blaze but i would hope that they do run well is david bell love his skill set 6-2-205 so we got pretty decent size on him could be a modern day big slot or could be a it's hard to compare to like Cooper Cup, but play that same role where it's a modern day possession receiver where you still run crazy after the catch. He was very good after the catch in college. I hope he runs in the four fives, high four fours, meaning like four eight, four nine. He's somebody I'm interested in looking at. Another one who I touched on in the intro is George Pickens. He's a guy in college who just dunks on people, has incredible hands and body control, and goes up and gets it. But if he runs like a four six, which we've seen at the combine before, like Nikhil Harry, his weighted justice speed score is incredible, but the guy isn't physical in the NFL and his lack of speed hurts him. George Pickens looks physical in college. Hopefully he'll translate that to the NFL, but if he runs a four six, it's going to be real tough for Buddy. And the last two that I'll talk about, one is Traylon Burks. It's going to be like DK Metcalf all over again. 6'3", almost 230, supposedly runs 4'4". If he does that, he locks himself in as a wide receiver one in this class, although Garrett Wilson is on his heels for me. And lastly is Drake London. He does have a slight frame, 6'5", 210. So I'd love to see him run in the 4'5s because, again, similar to what I said about Chris Olave, if he runs in like the 4'6s, I get that he creates separation at the point of the catch like not all separation is just elite route running some of it is just bodying dudes and jumping over them but if you're four six and it's going to be tough for you to get off the line because cornerbacks are not going to be worried about you burning them 
I really hope he runs 4-5 so those Mike Evans comps come into fruition and he makes up for this fact that he is not all that big. But I kind of want to see him weigh in because he doesn't really look like a slender dude on the field. So that's all I got for you. That was a lot of names. My head fucking kills right now. I don't care about tight ends. Offensive linemen, they're cool. They're fat. So I don't want to talk about them. That's what I got on Q. Guys are probably running by the point that you're watching this video. These come out at 5 in the morning. I don't know what time they're running at. Probably 12 or 1 for the running backs and shit. So maybe you can watch this pre uh, combine and let me know what ends up happening let me know down below who you're most excited to see at the combine your boldest prediction for the combine mine is sky Moore runs in the four two so i'm probably gonna be wrong on that he's gonna run a four five and i'm gonna get drafted but that's what we're at I, those weren't words i just said all right i can just let's cut this shit this video is over i don't i gotta go do nothing but this is a joke Talk to you guys later. See you next week. We'll probably talk about more rookies because old dudes are getting bored and talk about them. Peace. Yeah.